everybody and welcome to episode 14 of Dollhouse Build. So today we are going to be looking at working on this hallway of the basement which is the bottom part here. Now you probably know if you've been following the series the last um, episode we wallpapered the back there and uh, this bit on top here is um, it's not actually glued in all the rest is glued together now but that part's just sitting on top. Um, and I want to work with this area now because the structure is getting quite big and it already weighs quite a lot as well I struggled to get it upstairs and because of the size of it I don't want to keep knocking it sort of dragging it up and down stairs so for now um, because it will probably live upstairs I'm going to just keep it up here and we'll just go um, you know downstairs to sort of make stuff on the table because it's there's a bigger space there and then just start to bring things up to put in situ so sorry the light's not amazing um in here but but you know it should be okay for us to talk about what we need to so here we have this little area which slots through the side there so if i put that in there um this is the stair platform um, and it goes sorry i get my hand in there it just slots in very nicely into there and then obviously glues in place now this underside part, um, I'm going to be gluing uh, gluing that. I'm going to be painting that white to match the the kind of rest of the ceilings, um, and then the top is probably going to be wood. Now I just need to have a go at putting these stairs in um, situ, so that we can have a look at how everything fits together. So the stairs will have one going like that, and then obviously the second part will go here which then oops which then comes out of the top now on the instructions you can see that there now on the instructions it says do not glue that bit in until the other part the house is assembled because the house will sit on top which means there's another nine mil of mdf to go on here so it says obviously don't glue that into place until um you know until until we're ready with that now with regards to the hallway floor I actually want this floor to be um, tiled with some Victorian tiles. So I do have them on order and um, I'll not tell you what they are. We'll do a bit of an unboxing when they arrive. Um, and then I had an idea for maybe making a cupboard at the back where I can put some cleaning things, you know, maybe a, a hoover, etc. And then obviously the main staircase bit. So now we know that's how that's assembled. Uh, let's take these pieces downstairs and I'll tell you my ideas. Okay, so I hope the lighting's okay for us. Um, it is, as you can probably tell, winter in the UK and it's a dark night. And unfortunately, if I want to do anything after work, it's going to be by unnatural light at the minute, unfortunately. So uh, it is what it is. Um, so I just wanted to go through a couple of things. So firstly, this is the little step, the little landing, if you like. Um, so what I'm going to be doing, that bottom part is kind of a ceiling of the underside cupboard. And we're going to be painting that white, the white silk that we used on the ceilings. And then the top, I'm going to slot it into place and just draw the edges. And then I, what I'm going to do is actually put um, wood strips on there. So it's like a little wooden strip landing. So that's the plan for that. In terms of the stairs, ugh, do you know what? Stairs are my absolute nemesis for doll's houses. I hate them. It's not so much when they're like this, it's when you've got to mess about with the little spindles and the new old posts. I don't know if anybody else has trouble with them, but I have made a lot of stairs and I have never had a staircase that's gone to plan. Um, I've done the metal spiral staircase as well and they were a massive drama. Um, and with the with kits that you normally get, you tend to get these um, MDF stair sets. And in my opinion, I really hate them. Um, if you're going to stair carpet them, then fine, because it will cover most of it up. If you're not, then you need to really make sure you give it a good sanding before you start painting, because they are very roughly cut and you'll just end up with bits stuck out everywhere. So give it a really good sanding with um, a rough, then a, a, sand, a fine sandpaper. And then obviously paint it or stain it. Um, with MDF like this, stain, wood stain, it tends to be, in my experience, it goes on very, very dark. So just bear that in mind, you might want to do a light coat. And because of the way it's absorbent, it absorbs a lot as well. So it, your wood stain does not go very far. You might be better even maybe priming it um, and then putting wood stain on. I don't know if that would work. I know you can prime it and then paint it. 
but yeah if you try a piece on some scrap mdf you'll know what i mean it, it just sucks sucks all the uh, the wood stain in so the plan for the stairs what i want to do um i want to paint the side that shows white i want to paint the treads that sit forward here white and then on the top i want to put some wood veneer and maybe have it overlapping slightly so that's the plan for the stairs um now in terms of the actual stair areas and i do need to think about how it will connect to a piece of skirting here and at the bottom so the plan is i have this mdf and i think it's two mils two mils wide and it's just sort of the standard sheet mdf uh, mdf i'm saying balsa just the standard balsa now the reason why i'm using it is because i've got a lot of it and it's dead cheap to be honest so for any jobs like this when you don't need anything to make um you know anything with any strength really then balsa wood is a is a good choice um so what we're going to do i've laid it on there just so that it, it sort of matches the back there and what i've done is i've gone about i think it's probably about three mils that um but i've just checked from each stair and it's about one might be a bit more it might be four four mils maybe but just make sure you've got the same you know uh the same sort of width all the way down and then i've cut that bit so i end up with a strip like that so the idea is that this is obviously going to stick onto that and then we're going to be carrying on with skirting at the top there and then carrying on with skirting at the bottom here so i'm i think these are called stringers these bits that go up the stairs you'll see them that you have them in your real house at home and i didn't know whether it would go on like that or whether i'd have to cut it and slot it on the top um because the stairs sit like that against each other if they were flush to the walls like that and i didn't have any space i would have had to cut them but actually when i've put them together there's a tiny gap and i've checked to see if two lots of this will fit between so four mils and it will so i can have it on that side and that side without having to worry about cutting each individual step um so what we're going to do i'm just going to line it up and i've never done this before so it's a complete experiment of how my interpretation is of how we're going to do it i've not watched any tutorials on this recently i've no idea how they've done it i'm just going to have a look at how i would done it do it so I have some skirting here and this is the skirting board it's just sort of a standard dollhouse skirting and what I'm going to try and do is just work out that if that was the edge there then that would come across on the top and I'm just going to try and line that up just make sure the back that's all straight at the back so that that touches that area there which is about there. So where the skirting would start, I want that top bit to finish. And that's pretty much perfect. So what I'll do, I'll draw a sharp pencil line up there. So I need to cut that bit off and then I need to cut along there as well. So let's cut that bit off first. Okay, and then if I line that up again, like that, that corner, that bit should come across perfectly there and it does. So what I need to do is just mark that bit across there and cut that bit off as well. Now if I turn it round so that I can see what I'm doing, it would help. Okay, so I have the skirting that comes. Oh, I've done it wrong now. How have I done it? That comes along. Have I cut that bit wrong? I have, haven't I? Because. No, that's right. So that goes there. Oh my gosh, I'm confusing myself. Right, so that goes there, and then the top bit, which is there, needs to be cut off as well. 
so let me cut that little bit off there and I'm not taking any measurements of this but as you can see I'm literally just eyeballing it like I said I don't know if this is the right way we'll see what it turns out like I've got a lot of balsa wood so if it doesn't turn out how I want it to I can do it again but as you can see that now sits flush that stringer with the top of this stair bit here and so then that will neatly continue on with that skirting board there so that's the top done so let's have a look at the bottom so on the bottom I need to do something as well but bear in mind that is going to be the floor from there so there's already a bit at the bottom I need to cut off and then I somehow need this to sit like that now there's going to be a bit of an edge there I'm trying to work out the best way to do this let's just cut that bottom off first so we can get rid of that area there where the floor is going to be okay so Right, so the skirting then is going to come on from there. So where that corner is, if I put that there. Yeah, I could do with a little extra piece, to be honest. I could almost do with gluing a bit on there and just making that slightly longer. So that I can like put it onto there. Hmm, but do you know what, the door as well, I'm just thinking that door probably comes somewhere along there as well. So I might stick that bit on and cut it as though we're putting the skirting board there and then we can have a look when we put it in, in situ how it will actually look. Okay, so let's get that bit glued and then we'll see where we are in a minute. Right, so this is take two. <laughs> So you might have noticed in the last one, but the top here wasn't straight across. So I've actually made a second piece. So this is the new piece. And as you can see now there, that lines perfectly up. Now I've got on top of here, which is where this area will sit there. There will be a little bit of um, a ridge because it will have some, well, it'll sit like that. It will have some um, wood on the top. So what I've done is I've just made that top a little bit bigger um so that that can butt against if for some reason i need to make it smaller i can but obviously i can't add to it so i've left that as that now if we look at the bottom i've actually had to glue a second piece on here um because the way that i want this to sit hold that against there so this is the floor which will be coming across here and the way that i want that to sit Obviously, if I put it there, which levels up with that coming in perfectly, there was actually going to be a small gap there. You can see that. So I've just added an extra bit on and, and glued it on. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I've measured this floor bit here. So I'm going to cut along here. No, I'm not because that is going to go. Yeah, that's right. So if I cut along where the flooring is, and then I just need to cut a little area down here. So let me cut along there. Now this has not had that much time to glue, so I'm hoping it's not all gonna fall apart. That'll be a bit embarrassing. Okay, okay, that worked out okay. Right. So, I should have just blooming masked this part on and then I won't have to keep remembering which way I'm going with it. It gets a bit confusing. Right, so, that at the top there now and that at the bottom is obviously where the floor will be. And that line, if I line it up like that, that might be easier to see. So, I need that to then butt against where that will end and I think that's going to be a good place there so that's just where that corner piece is so I'll cut down there next actually 
actually do you know what i need to pencil mark this because when i take this top off i don't i've no idea what i'm doing all right so that bit goes there which is like oh no damn you right i'll glue that bit on again in a minute let me just work out what i need to do so i need to cut There. that bit needs to go on like that so I just need to cut from there to there straight down the middle basically that just needs to go straight down the middle right and then I should be able to put that I'll have to re-glue that bit back on. Well that bit actually I would like that to be. That bit on there. And then I should have a line where that bit can go up to. Let me just line that back back up there. Yeah, and then that lines up. It obviously continues on there. I'm making a right hash of this, aren't I? So that goes on like that. And obviously I'll sand all this area, but that will go like that. And then that will go on there to continue that skirting board part. So that's the idea. I'm gonna neaten this up a bit because it's not looking great. So we'll sand the bottom and neat all that up, um, glue that back on, and then we'll see what the finishing product looks like. Right, that was a little bit more trickier than I would have thought. But here we have it kind of the finished product so if I lay that on there now you can see you can see what I was trying to achieve anyway if I've actually done it but you can see there that will now make a nice area where the skirting can join on to and at the bottom same just gonna have a nice area again flat edge where the skirting can join on to so what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna just sand that edge ever so slightly so it just makes it a little bit curved so it's not so sharp when it goes up against that little skirting area um, so we'll just get that done and then I think that is pretty much ready to start painting okay so that's all sorted so we need to get sanding so this area which is on show and each one of these treads that are facing forward on the stairs needs to be sanded so we will get going with that and I've just got some really it's almost like wet dry sandpaper it's really really um, fine So something that I hadn't really thought of before is the underside of these stairs. So coming from your view, because the stairs go up and then round and then up again, this the back of this part you're not really going to see. But on the second part, because it will go like that, you're going to see this bit. Now because of the reasons I said with wood dye, it just soaks it all up and I don't want the hallway to be really that dark. I think the backs of these I'm going to paint the white, so the same as the sides, um, the front stairs and then that bit is going to be that same white colour, the cream white that we've used everywhere else. So we'll get painting that. <laughs>
painting the underside of that bit because it's white. I've got the white out. So rather than go and get the big tub of silk paint, for the, it's not really a ceiling as such. It's just under a cupboard. So that will suffice. But I just wanted to show you the difference between the edge of MDF, which has gone that white colour after one coating, as opposed to all those edges, which are these ones, which have been done in white. And look at the difference. I don't know if you can see that very much on camera, but that's white. That has just soaked completely in. So it's going to need a good few layers on that. Hi guys, so we're a few days on again and the reason it's been a few days is because I have had to clamp together my stair treads. So let me explain. So the stair treads, um, obviously I said we were going to paint this and we were going to have the treads on top and I bought some oak, this is just white oak and it's like cladding and um, so it comes on a long strip, I think I bought, I can't remember, so many metres worth um and yeah obviously i've had to cut them to size um this exact size of the step that i needed and then cut them all out and because it's been put into obviously a circle for shipping um there's a couple of issues first things like that it's, it's sort of cracking where the the joins are um, but secondly each piece i've cut a lot of the pieces were quite warped so i've had to clamp them i've cut them out and then i've clamped them together and now as you can see um, there's still a very slight bend on some of them but I think once they've been glued down if I clamp them or try and hold them on um, the glue will hold them so I've got eight treads and I've got eight pieces and how I actually made these I just cut them out of obviously the um, trim that I've shown you I just measured the length of each stair tread and then the width and I've cut the exact length which I think was about 71 millimetres and then for the actual tread, I think it was about 19 millimetres and I've just added a, a mill on extra so that there's a very, very slight overhang. So once the tread's put in place there, as you can see, um, and it's flush with the back, there'll just be a very slight overhang at the front there. And that's sort of the look that I want to achieve. Now, in terms of these pieces, I cut them out and then I had a look as to which was the nicer part as to which would be the top or the bottom so I decided that this was the nicer part on this piece so that's going to be the top and then I had a look at the straightest piece which I want at the front and then all I've done is this top area here I've just scraped a few times along sandpaper just to give it a slightly rounded edge and then I've marked on that that's the underside and that's the front so I know when it comes to gluing that's how I'm gluing it and I've done exactly the same with each one, like that. Now I've just gone around these on some um, rough sandpaper to smooth it out. And then, like I said, there's just a very slight rounded edge just on the top of all these treads. So the next step is obviously to get some wood dye, the dark oak wood dye on these. Um, everything else has been taking three coats of it, so I assume that these are taking three coats as well. So we'll get some wood dye on um, and then we'll have a look at how they look with that on against the, uh, the cream there, the white. notice while I'm um, painting these last couple of pieces is that the dye um, on this oak is not it, the oak is must not be as porous because the dye although it's going in um, it's not soaking in like most other wood so pretty much nearly all other woods that I've used the dye on just tend to suck it up like crazy Whereas here, it's once you've once you've used dye, it soaks it in. Especially the first one tends to be soaked in. Oh, I've missed that edge there. Look, um, tends to soak in a lot. And then the second and third coats, it will just go on like this, where it won't sort of take a lot of dye. Um, but this, right from the first coat, this is how this was going in um, on. It's just not soaking very much up. So I don't know if that's a, a good thing or a bad thing. I don't suppose it matters. Um, but an interesting point to note is that um, obviously if you are using different types of wood 
and you are trying to get a similar colour, which I am, because I want this colour to be very similar to the actual door frames, then I will need to compare them. So this has had two coats now. So what I'll do, I'll leave that to dry completely and then I'll compare with the frames of the doors that I've already um, stained in the wood dye and see whether or not we need to put um, a third coat on. So just one of the other things that I'll need to dye as well are these newel posts. So obviously with the stairs, I'm going to switch that because I've got wood dye on, but the newel posts will go one here, one at the top, one at the top, depending on where I want to put it, probably on the top there. And then you have the spindles and then you'll have the handrail like that. Okay, so this part is the little um, stair uh, stairway area, the little stairway landing if you like. Um, and it's been obviously painted white and sanded um, three times between coats um, on the underside. I mean, you're not going to see that anyway because that's going to be like that just and the, well, like that and the stairs are going up here, round here, up here and I'm going to make probably a little stairs cupboard or something under there. So you're not really going to see that anyway but because it's a ceiling I've, I've painted it white. Um, this edge I've sanded and painted, so you're not going to see that part because again the stairs will come up basically like that. Um, and then the stairs there, that will go like that. So the other stairs that go into this side, that st underside part will need to be painted. And this bit here is going to be white. I didn't realise that until after, which is why it's only got one coat. So I will have to give it another coat on there. Um, but I did have a great idea thinking because I want wood on here, I'm going to put wood on and then we can just slide it through. <laughs> and obviously, yeah, I can't put the wood in and then slide it through because um, obviously it won't go in the slat to allow me to slide it through. It needs to be just as it is. So I think what I'll do is slot this into place, draw the lines are where um, the walls will be so that I've got a centerpiece where I need to put the wood. And then what I'll do is I'll make a little card template and then stick the wood to it, slide that through and then put that wood and, and the um, with the actual top on there. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. Okay, so these have all had three coats of paint of uh, wood dye on now, and I'm I will check it against the frames, but I think that's pretty much the colour um, that we want. I think that's exactly the same. Um, I will match it against the frames just to check, and then if that's all okay, we'll start putting some of that satin varnish on. Um, so I did start painting that. I literally did that little bit, and then I thought, actually, what might be nice if those tops are the cream, and then the rest of it is that colour, just to again, just something a little bit different. So I think that's what we're going to do. So um, if you're ever doing paint and wood dye on the same part, it's always better to do the paint first because the wood dye will run into other areas. But if you do the paint first, it will stop the wood dye um, running in. So if you do the, um, because I'm doing this white, I'm going to do that white and then the paint will act as a seal to stop the dye running into it, hopefully. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll give it a go on one and see how it turns out. And then if we're happy, we'll, we'll obviously do the rest. And then the spindles are going to be white. So these guys all need painting as well. So I don't know if there's a particular right or wrong way to paint spindles, um, but the way I generally do it is on the round bits, I usually just go round like that. And I just tend to find that that helps. If you go up and down, you tend to get a lot of pink blobs on these areas where the actual detail is. So if you just tend to go around like that, it just helps prevent that. Um, and obviously, because this is painted, they are going to need a bit of a sand. And I'm just going to be using a very, very, very fine sandpaper because obviously you don't want to be and and just go around with it. You don't want to be going up and down because again, you're going to take off this detail. So I generally just go around for that. And then obviously these bits, I'll just go up and down. And then again, just dr almost dry brush these areas at the end, just to make sure um, there's not too much paint. Like I've said before, it's always better if you can to just put less paint on, little sand, and then another coat, and then little sand, rather than trying to put a lot on at once. I know, you know, people sometimes rush it and think, you know, you'd rather put a lot on and maybe do just one or two coats as opposed to three coats plus, but you will get a much better finish the thinner coats you put on and the more you sand in between than trying to rush through it. If you do get a job that's fiddly like this where there's quite a lot of bits to do, you know, when you get start finding yourself getting a bit fed up, just put it away for a few days and come back to it um, because it is better if you can give each piece the sort of same level of care and you'll get that nice finish on the end. 
Okay, so just to give you an update of where we are with everything, the stair parts here are all done and ready for the treads. The treads are all done, they just need to be varnished in the satin varnish. The bolstrades I've done, I've done four because there's two for this section and two for the other stairs. I just got them all out at the same time and I decided to paint the top white. So they're pretty much done. They just need the varnish on this bit and then the white bit needs another um, coat or two. Um, the spindles, I've had one coat and a good sanding um, with a very fine sandpaper and they just need another coat or two as well. And then we need to begin assembly. So I think I'll leave this video here because I need to get all this stuff cleared away now um, for Christmas. I'm getting really busy at work as well. So unfortunately, I won't have any time for the next few weeks. So I'm going to get everything cleared up and then um, over Christmas or in the new year, we'll carry on with this. And uh, I'll be releasing the, uh, the next video, which will be part two of the stairs and carrying on with the hallway. So until then, have a great Christmas and new year, everybody. And I'll uh, catch up with you then. Thanks. Take care.